Hi, and welcome to How to Improve Science Performance Through Strategic Note-Taking. Hi, this begins our lecture on complex motion. Most of the motion events we have been looking at are pretty simple. But not all motion events are simple. In fact, most motion events are pretty complicated, with objects traveling at different speeds, stopping in different places, and going in different directions. Today we are going to start looking at complex motion events. You need to know that complex motion events, or complex motion, is a series of simple motion events. When we study complex motion, we will break it down into simple motion sections. Please write this down. Each section of a motion event is called a leg. Think of a track race. When a group of runners each run a section of the race, we refer to each section as a leg. Let me give you an example of a complex motion event. This is Sam. Sam is now going to perform a complex motion event. All right, so let's talk about what Sam just did. Well, Sam started out and he hopped across the table. Then Sam sat and looked around for a little bit. Then Sam hopped back to where he started. So how many legs were in this motion event? If you guess three, you are correct. First, leg number one, he hopped across the table. Leg number two, he sat and looked around. And leg number three, he hopped back to where he started. It's important to know that when studying complex motion, even not moving is part of a complex motion event. So write that down. Not moving is part of a complex motion event. Now let's analyze this complex motion event. Please note, we are going to study these five factors in every motion event we study. They are time interval, displacement, position, total time, and total distance. Let's start with time interval. Okay. You need to know that time interval represents the time from start to finish of each leg. And its symbol is delta t. So if it took Sam four seconds to hop across the table in leg number one, we say his time interval is four seconds. Because a time interval is just how long each leg took. Okay. In leg number two, Sam just sat there and looked around for two seconds. So the time for that leg was two seconds. And then finally, in leg number three, Sam hopped back to where he started. That took him four seconds. So the time interval for that leg and just that leg was four seconds. Pretty easy. The next thing we're going to analyze is Displacement. Please record this. Displacement is a measurement of how far an object traveled in a particular direction for each leg. The symbol for displacement is delta x. To indicate direction, 
we use positive and negative numbers. For example, if I were to take three steps forward, my displacement would be plus three. If I were to take three steps backwards, my displacement would be negative three. So a positive number means going forward, and a negative number means going backwards. You need to remember that measurements of displacement can be positive or negative. You also need to know that a positive displacement means that the object is going forward, and a negative displacement means the object is going backwards. Let's analyze Sam's motion. In leg number one, Sam went one, two, three, four, five hops forward. So we say that his displacement is plus five hops. Always include your unit. Okay. In leg number two, Sam just sat and looked around. Okay. So his displacement, he wasn't going forward, he wasn't going backwards. Sam's displacement is zero. Okay, zero hops. And in the last one, leg, leg number three, Sam took one, two, three, four, five hops back to where he started. So his displacement was negative five hops. He went forward, positive number. If you don't go forward or backwards, it's a zero. And if you go backwards, it's a negative number. Now let's look at our next factor. Oops, I missed one. Position. Okay. Position. We already know that an object's position is its location at any given time. And we should already know that position symbol is X. However, when we study complex motion, position represents how far from home the object is. Please write this down. Position measures how far an object is from its starting position. Let's look at Sam's position throughout his motion event. In leg number one, again, Sam took five hops away from where he started. So his position is five hops away from where he started. So we write that down as five hops for leg one. Okay? In leg two, Sam is just sitting there looking around. But where is he compared to where he started? He's still five hops away from where he originally started. So we say his position is still five hops. Okay? In leg number three, he hops back to where he started. So where is his position compared to where he started? Zero indicates that you're back to where you started. So zero hops. Okay, if he's zero hops away, again, that means he's home and he's back where he started. It's important to know that whenever an object returns to its starting position, its position will always be a zero. Now, the next thing we're going to analyze in this motion event is total time. You need to remember that total time measures the total time from the beginning until the end of each leg. Okay? So if we look at Sam's motion event again, uh, in leg number one, it took him four seconds, okay, to take five hops. So his total time from the start of the motion event till the end of leg one was four seconds, okay? Leg two took Sam two seconds, but now we have to consider total time from the beginning. So we add together the four seconds from leg one to the two seconds from leg two, and we get a total of six seconds. And last, in the third leg, it took him four seconds to hop back to where he started. So we add all of our times together from when he started all the way to the end of leg three, and that is a total of 
10 seconds. It's important to remember that when measuring total time, the numbers should always get bigger. Because if you're totaling up each leg, the numbers should always get bigger. The last thing we're going to analyze is total distance. Please write this down. Total distance measures the total distance from the beginning till the end of each leg. Let's look at Sam's total distance. In leg one, we know that Sam took five hops. So the total distance from the beginning is five hops. In leg two, Sam sat and looked around for a little bit. Total distance traveled. He didn't go anywhere in leg two. We add zero to the five hops he took in leg one and the total distance is still five hops. In leg three, Sam took five hops back to where he started. So we total all the distance up, five hops, no hops, plus five hops, we get a total distance of 10 hops. Please remember that distance is always a positive number. Distance is always a positive number. And just like total time, total distance, the number should always get bigger. You're always adding to the leg before. Now let's review and let's put together all of the factors that we've learned today. The first thing we learned was a leg. A leg is a section of a complex motion event. For each leg, we analyzed five things. The first one was time interval. Time interval is a measure of how much time went by just in each leg. The next thing we analy analyzed was displacement, delta x. Displacement is a measure of how far forward or backwards an object goes just in that leg. So displacement can be positive if you go forward and it can be negative if you go backwards. If you don't go in any direction, your displacement is zero. X stands for position. Position is a measure of how far away you are from where you started. Next we did total time. Total time symbol is T. And total time is a measure of how much time has gone by from the beginning of the motion event until the end of each leg. Total time is always a total and the numbers always get bigger. Last, we measured distance or total distance. Total distance is a measure of how far the object traveled from the beginning until the end of each leg. So the total distance always gets bigger and distance is always a positive number. That concludes our lecture for complex motion.